Awesome. All right. So thank you, Mark. Um, Anne, why don't you go next? Yep. I'm Ann Barleib. I uh, was six and I graduated in November uh, 2018. And then I retired medically in that July, about six months later, um, July 2018. Um, and um, after 14 years in the army, I was a helicopter pilot in psychological operations. Um, and uh, when I graduated, um, I took up writing and I write prolifically and volunteer here and there. Awesome, thank you, Anne. Uh, Willie, you're next. Yes, yes, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, so I'm Willie Johnson, I am an Air Force veteran uh, retired after a 23 year uh, career in 2019. I was a part of the Chicago cohort two, the second Chicago cohort, which was super amazing. Um, happy to be here. I've learned a lot since uh, joining Dog Tag and to be able to come here and, and answer questions and whatever you have kind of rumbling around. I think that's why we're here. So I'm excited. Uh, good to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Willie. Um, so I'll start. Uh, answer or asking some questions, um, and we can just go in the same uh, order. So Mark, Ann, and then Willie. Um, all right. So to start, um, can you give us a general overview of your experience with the program and what was your favorite part of the program? Uh, so general overview. <clears throat> um, I'll just give you how I entered the program. Uh, it started July last year. Like I said, I've been doing government work in Navy for a while, and I was kind of ready to shift gears and pursue entrepreneurship. So that's the lens of which I entered it from. Uh, the program was great. We did five months. There's like with anything, there's a little bumps in the beginning, but uh, it definitely uh, improved drastically. And that's a cool thing. They dog The dog tag team does make an effort. And from what I've heard, cohort to cohort, but with even in your cohort to take feedback and adjust. So it's more beneficial for everyone involved. Um, but we it, the kind of the basic rundown you're going to have is you're going to have your Georgetown classes or Loyola if you're with a Chicago cohort. Uh, you're going to have breakout rooms with your groups. You're going to have, um, uh, sorry, uh, rotations within the bakery. That's when you work with different teams within the bakery. Uh, and all that was great. But for me, my favorite part was uh, I've heard you guys, it, whoever gets in the program, uh, you guys are going to have a couple weeks in person. We had one week for us, welcome back week. Uh, so they brought us all into DC, put us up in rooms, and we got to actually work with the bakery and meet each other for the first time. And I think for me, that was pretty much hands down my favorite point was getting to actually spend time with all the people I'd gotten to know over the last two and a half months up to that point and uh, being able to socialize and actually work with everyone in the bakery. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. And being in cohort six, um, this is before the pandemic. And so I was very fortunate to do the entire fellowship in the bakery. Um, mm. And my absolute favorite, it's a, it's a gorgeous location. If you're local to the area, I highly recommend going down and just spending time in it. It's beautifully designed in a, in a really um, five-star location down like within very close walking distance to the waterfront. Um, and so my favorite, there's so many things I really loved about the program, um, but for that reason, being in person, I, I absolutely loved going, like when we were on break, being able to go down into the bakery and have a, you know, a bowl of soup or, um, uh, you know, cup of tea or something like that. And um, beyond that, if I hadn't been on location, I think, you know, equally, a favorite of mine is the finding your voice part of the program. Um, I found that to be hugely influential to me and probably the most memorable. Awesome, thank you, Ann. Willie? Uh, yes, yeah, so to piggyback what Mark and Ann said, uh, the program is amazing. My kind of pathway and in, in journey into dog tag, um, I was searching for some business kind of IQ uh, entrepreneurship was something that was bubbling up. 
uh, during the pandemic, it was 20, uh, uh, 2022. And so we did majority virtual, but uh, actually a dog tag alum, he, uh, I, I wanna say he recruited me. If you don't know who Vince Loran is, I was at a uh, American Warrior Partnership because I was in every space that brought value to veterans prior to learning about dog tag. And I bump into this gentleman named Vince and we start talking and he's like, hey man, you need to look into this dog tag program. And I was eagerly waiting. Um, prior to that, I was, I was literally, I was looking, what, what do I need to do to move from like a military environment space to, to move into an entrepreneurial space? And, and when I evaluated the dog tag program, similar to Mark and Ann, the rotations, the learning lab, the staff, the program, the curriculum, they are super strategic. And, you know, me come up, I have a, a military police black background. And so that entrepreneur kind of learning that needed to take place within the cohort. And we were mostly on Zoom. I got a, a, an opportunity to, uh, to go to DC for that week. It put me in a space that I had to really grow. And to be honest, I thought that I was merely going to grow from a, a business perspective, but to be able to be with spouses, dependents, other branches of service, veterans, you know, I'm a coach by nature and that's, that's the business that I pitched. And, and I'm going to tell you in those five months, the relationships that grew, not only did my business IQ grow, but the relationship that I made with the dog tag staff, the dog tag alumni, and just the complete program, it, it, it was amazing. So uh, if you have any questions in this in this form, please like get them all out because that's exactly what I did. Any and everybody that I could talk to, I wanted to see, is it worth my time? Is it worth me devoting this? And, and it was, I can tell you, it was very much uh, beneficial. So um, happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Willie. And you actually transitioned me perfectly into my next question, um, which is how did the fellowship help you create community? So um, we'll start again with Mark. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm trying to think how to phrase this. Uh, I mean, like I said, mentioned in my, my last answer, that was kind of my favorite part. Uh, I got really lucky with my cohort and there's always like, there's always, you're always going to have people that you don't a hundred percent like mesh with. You're not best friends with, but everyone is friendly and you find your, um, your diverse group. Like Willie said, you have people that are not just military background, not from just from different branches. You have spouses, you have caretakers. And it was, it was really nice kind of just throwing yourself in there and putting yourself out there and being involved in the process. Like I actually still, um, everyone's gotten busy. Uh, for example, for me, I have a, a, a newborn that actually was born during the program. So life's been hectic, uh, but I still have worked to keep in touch with the people even after the cohort. It's been what, nine months and change since, since I graduated and I still try to keep in touch. Um, it's not a daily thing, but I, I really think the best part about this program is the people that you're with, uh, especially your other, uh, your fellow dog taggers and um, yeah, just helping each other through the process because everyone's there for a different reason. Sometimes reasons change throughout the program but having those people there to bounce ideas off of, commiserate with when you have homework and you don't want to do it, uh, all of that really makes the, the whole experience. It's not just uh, a, cl a, a class or a program where you're going through by yourself and you happen to have other people there. It's actually experience it with them is I think the best part and the most impactful part of the program. Awesome, thank you, Mark. And The cohorts are so well curated. Um, Dog Tag really does an intentional job of selecting people from as best they can, all different services, a good blend of, you know, the service member, the caregiver, the family member. I always encourage, I, I've, I've referred probably several dozen people to the Dog Tag program and, um, you know, folks that have not been picked up or selected for the program, I always encourage them and say, you know, don't take it personally. It, a lot of times, you know, it's, it's has to do with the, the service component, the caregiver component, the family component. Don't get discouraged if you don't get picked up. It doesn't say anything about you. It has more to do with the curation of the cohort. And then several of the people who did get 
waitlisted got picked up because you know somebody couldn't make it in that cohort or vice versa. Like I was picked up in cohort number four, and because of my medical board process, I wasn't able to get actually enrolled until cohort six. So a lot of things kind of it's like Tetris, things move around. But I share that to say that it was really eye-opening for me to see how diverse. And, and unique we really are. It's not, the dog tag is not just a plug and play. You know, they really look at your whole background. They look at what you're interested in doing, what your experience is and how it, it's like looking at the individual and then the cohort collective. And um, just going through that process and realizing um, that that strategy was re- kind of made me appreciate groups differently. I am, I am not so good at social media. I don't, I don't have a Facebook, you know, profile. I've, I've not really kept up in, in that type of way, but, um, I am very active. I'm in Alexandria, Virginia, and I am very active in kind of the local, a lot of local veteran scenes, you know, there's armed services, art partnership, um, community building artworks, um, and so it's been really nice to kind of see the, the cross pollination of those groups. And so nice, you know, having graduated in cohort four several years ago now, and again, before the pandemic, really seeing things expand and grow. And now when you say, or somebody sees like, oh, a, a dog tag alumni, it's almost like, it's likened to, I mean, it, it's, it's become, brand recognition and it it takes a certain people uh, uh, receive it with ex- with an expectation of quality and it's like you've been through something that you know has street credibility and um is just a brilliantly designed program and so that's felt really good to be a part of something that is growing and has I always say a global intention. I know that's ambitious, but you know, to go from like one school to the next, but I I definitely feel uh, like a global intention about it. Um, So, um, and, and, oh, the last thing I just wanna share about community building is that the alumni network upon graduation is truly extraordinary. I mean, Sarah sends out updates every week there's a portal with tons of resources on there that you have you know, access to with the push of a button. Um, and then I'm still very active in, in mentorship. So you can get assigned a mentor um, if that's something you're interested in doing or participating in. And I forget what cohort my mentee, Melissa is my mentee. And um, it's, I say mentee, but it's more like collaboration. I mean, we're colleagues now, you know, she's a graduate, I'm a graduate. and. Um, but we've been talking, you know, for a couple of years now, I think. Um, so it's just a really nice um, connection and network to be a part of. Thank you so much, Anne. I appreciate you mentioning uh, the mentorship program as well. Um, Melissa was in cohort 13, I want to say. So yes, yeah, so it's been it's been a little bit. <laughs> Um, Willie, I know that you already touched on um, community in your last answer, but definitely want to hold space in case there's anything you'd like to add. Uh, absolutely. Uh, community was one of my whys, right? Like, why, why do I want to give my time to dog tag um, and to come into a, a program, kind of not knowing that diversity piece, not knowing the community piece, not knowing how well would I be received, right? And I, I, I kind of had blinders on, you know, thinking about the tribe that I was used to. The tribe that I was used to was a military environment. And so the community piece of dog tag, to me, one of the best gifts that they have is the diversity of uh, the, the, the fellows, the diversity of the dog tag staff, the diversity of the learning lab partners that it made, in my opinion, everyone feel included. I, I don't know if it's possible to that's just my opinion. I'm sure there's some people who may who may not, you know, uh, uh, believe what I believe. But to sit through a program and, and be on Zoom during the pandemic, I want to really just highlight that it was very difficult. And that sense of community through our highs and lows, 
Like we all come from a totally different background, whether we all are in person every day or in Zoom every day, it is a five month commitment. And I, I'm gonna tell you, it was tough. And having a community of dog tag fellows who can pick you up during the pandemic, there were many people who were losing family members, relatives, you know, and, and everything in that sense of community to include, I, I got married, I got engaged during the, the uh, <laughs> during the cohort and married this year. I love my wife and I, I love the fact that she supported me through that entire process. But the community building that Dog Tag has within the cohort of fellows, within the staff, and this within our community as a nation, I'm going to tell you, I felt supported and encouraged because there were many days that I said, hey, do, am I really committed to this? Am, can I really follow through? And, and I will say I've made some amazing friendships. Uh, I do know, I know Mark, I've seen Ann many times, just like her family now. And any opportunity that, you know, when you're a part of something that is so amazing that you meet such amazing people, it gives you that, that, that courage and that strength to kind of push forward. It's not just a business entrepreneur living business school. To me, dog tech is like a life. For me, it was life changing. And, and that's because my why coming in was to build a sense of community, to really understand who I was outside of the uniform. So I grew as a coach, I grew as a mentor, I grew, you know, as a person. So community building to me is one of the, the best aspects of what they bring to this program. Great, thank you so much, Willie. Um, so pivoting here a little bit, um, I'm hoping that each of you can tell me about your experience with the capstone. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the capstone is the final project of the fellowship where fellows are required to create a business plan and then pitch it to business leaders in the community. Um, so Mark, can you start us off with um, what was this process like and how have you used it? Um, I'll start with the first one. How is this process like? Uh, so I mentioned previously, I came into the program knowing I wanted to do entrepreneurship. That was the, the main purpose for me. Um, and so as you go through the classes, I always kind of took everything through that lens. And so you're you're kind of putting these pieces together. So like I said, not just for the capstone, but because I intend to launch my business upon graduation, I was putting these pieces in place, getting a financial plan together. How am I going to market it? What is my um, what is my demographic I'm going for? Like, who is my customer? And it's made i mean capstone's not easy but it is made easier in that regard that as you go through the program you are learning all these things that you are going to eventually put into this final project and so the build up all the way to it putting the pieces together uh, i did a lot of workshopping with other people within the cohort um uh you'll meet lisa at some point she is amazing uh, i did uh, one on ones with her uh on how to like on those different business questions to someone much more experienced and knowledgeable than myself and so she was awesome uh but yeah you, you just it, it kind of culminates it's this final project you do a pecha kucha presentation uh which is if you're not familiar it's just a slideshow that goes i believe it's every 20 seconds i'm a little rusty uh, and you just keep going through the slides and you just keep talking. And that was actually really cool. Um, but it was it was really useful. And it was more than a project for me uh, because, like I said, I, I used my exact presentation to then launch my business upon graduation. Uh, so it was a very useful experience. And even if you're not, if you have no interest in entrepreneurship, that's totally fine. Uh, we might get this question later. Spoiler alert. I'm not pursuing entrepreneurship anymore um, at this time. Uh, but it was, I still don't regret that part of it at all. It was very useful. And um, yeah, it was like your final, it's like your, your, there's no final test. It's like your final uh, test before you graduate college or high school or whatever. So it was, it, it, it felt complete once you did that. And it, it was, it was rewarding despite how parts of it were kind of a pain, but <laughs> that's helpful. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> uh, and I too came in with a um, business idea of, and I had an idea that I wanted to um, raise bees, harvest honey and do biscuit baking. And uh, I was very committed to this idea. And if you remember, I, I was still on active duty actually. I was, so I was going through the program. We graduated, it was November, 2017. And then I retired, you know, several months later, the July, 2018. 
And as I was going through the medical board process, I don't know that I had exactly come to terms with my medical conditions. I mean, I've had brain surgery. I have nerve damage. I can't regulate my body temperature at that time. My bladder wasn't working. I was self-catheterizing every four hours. It was really um, quite um, challenging. And when I got my, in the, you know, when you go through the medical board process, you get a NARSUM. And it was the first, I remember the first time I saw my medical conditions listed out and, you know, the army saying you're unfit. It was a significant emotional event. Um, and I go off to dog tag bakery and I kind of, the way the military trains us and our mindset is, you know, you set a goal, you accomplish it, you know, come hell or high water type of thing. And it came to the bakery rotation. Remember we're on site. So I'm in the bakery and I'm in the back in the kitchen and I'm, you know, having to step in and out of the walk-in freezer to cool off because I could not, I was getting overheated. And Dog Tag brought in these huge industrial fans. Uh, they really tried to accommodate me. Like every couple of days they were doing, I was putting rags around my neck, but I just, it was not working out. And finally, one afternoon, I'll never forget this, Megan and at the time programs manager, Kyle, took me, came and got me and and sat me down in the, in the bakery and very gently and so graciously said, Anne, we've tried to do this, 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 and this, and you're not able to do this kitchen thing. And it like, I, it's very emotional still for me now because they were the first ones to actually sit me down and say, you're not able to do this. And then immediately, like in the same sentence, they said, but here's all the things that we see that you can do. You know, you're a brilliant listener. You're a great advisor. You're really, um, you are, are detail oriented. Uh, you're a brilliant writer. And they said, why don't you pursue writing? And they, they kind of gave me the permission to uh, really, look at that as something not necessarily um, income generating and something that's a little bit maybe unique. Well, one of the things I love about dog tag is they kind of have their four pillars, right? And they don't have any expectations of what you do afterwards, but it's employment, you know, go out and get a job and they're well networked for that. Deloitte, defense contractors, NGOs, you name it. So employment, resume building, education, going back to school for something, entrepreneurship, which is kind of the wheelhouse, you know, advertised thing. And then this kind of fourth pillar that is self-care and uh, enrichment, personal enrichment. And my, you know, being medically retired, I was a major in the army and, and having no kids and no debt. I was in a position where I could live comfortably off of my medical retirement and not expose myself to the demands of having this idea of having to do something that's kind of beyond my, my physical capacity to do. Um, and so I abandoned um, the biscuit honey harvesting idea and worked through in my cohort feelings of failure regret, not following through, really mourning a part of myself that could be, you know, what I would calling then productive or um, goal oriented. And then one of my cohort colleagues invited me to do one of his projects. He needed a, a, a help in researching. And so we partnered up and his idea was a, a book like a, a mobile bookstore that was like also with coffee and stuff. And so I enjoyed that very much doing that. We presented the capstone process together and the, the learning edge on that for me was then, you know, he invited me, which is a huge compliment to continue to work with him. And I, as, as much as I love the idea and, and certainly um, think very highly of him, it, it gave me practice in saying, just because I'm good at something does not necessarily mean I have to do it. And so I was able to kind of work that boundary and tell him, thanks, but no thanks. You know, I've enjoyed working on getting your business plan fully 
you know, narrated and written. And I understand he's since used it for funding and different things, which is really great. But I didn't have the desire to continue on that project. So for many, many reasons, the capstone project was, and for none of which I anticipated, the capstone project was hugely influential for me. Um, and uh, like Mark says, it's got its irritants and things, and um, it's not necessarily a cakewalk. I mean, it's, it's the real deal, but you, you definitely learn a lot. Thank you so much, Anne. Willie? Uh, yes, so Capstone, um, if, if you can ever put together a business plan like I had not, in, in my previous experience before dog tag, I, I, I wanted to launch a business, a public speaking business, had no idea of the, the format. I had no idea of the strategy, the marketing. And, and so to talk about Capstone, to prepare you, if, if, you, if you go through with this journey, um, not too many times in life do you get a chance to exercise the, 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 the kinks per se out of whatever your idea is. If your idea is employment, is your if your idea is a business, everyone pitches something right in the capstone. So to prepare yourself for that capstone, you, from the outside looking in, I thought that it was this big grandiose mountain that I would not be able to 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 climb. And, and it's because the the limitations and the barriers too, you know, kind of what led me to dog tag was I wanted my business IQ to be higher. I wanted to learn marketing. I wanted to learn how do I extract what, what my purpose is from what my business idea was. And so what I saw within my own um, experience through Capstone is it gave me a real chance to understand the data, the numbers behind a particular business. And I pitched, I pitched the business that I currently do um, right now. It gave me the opportunity to see what is the best format, the best strategy to my business. And so within that capstone, you know, those five months culminate at the end to pitching. And if you're not a comfortable speaker, public speaker, or if you're not comfortable uh, putting together these plans, the resources in that living business school is your real kind of time uh, uh, energy to learn business from the inside. And that's what I appreciated most is I was prepared for my capstone. And, and so at the end, it, it felt amazing to stand up and pitch my business to these community partners and to get the feedback, not only from my fellows, but the community partners that are there to encourage and super encouraging and helpful, uh, the community partners that they bring in to even evaluate that piece. So I can tell you the capstone was nerve wracking, right? Because you do have to put in that work, that time, that effort and that energy to be the best version of yourself in that moment. And I can tell you, I've seen many people pivot in my, in my own experience uh, going through the capstone. It helped me knock off some of the, uh, uh, the fear that I had to, hey, is this something that you wanna move forward in? And so I would say the capstone, super amazing. Everything that you do up until you pitch that capstone prepares you. And you do have a supportive cast of, of dog tag, uh, alumni, staff, and, and, and partners to help you get there. And, and I can tell you, when you get there, you will be ready for it. And you will be ready for the next phase because it does, it does prepare you to step out of business with the confidence. Like myself, I wanted that IQ to, to, to increase in the business space. And I wanted to network. You know, the capstone is about a physical execution of a, of a plan and you, you, you pitching it and, and all that, but it's the networking. It's the people that, that you meet along the way to prepare you for that capstone, that when you walk away from it and you walk away from the program, you, you feel value added. And, and to me, that the, best, the best feeling in the world is to know that I, I, I put this time into this capstone, into this program, and I left feeling more fulfilled, more confident, and more enthused about you know moving forward in life. So, uh, Capstone is great, and it is a lot of work. You will want to quit, but uh, it you know uh, hang in there, and you, you can get through it. It, it looks like a good group of people, and uh, it's going to be amazing. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Willie. Um, so I have one more formal question, and then we can leave some time um for questions from the audience. So. 
Um, I think that this one will be especially helpful for all of you in the audience now. So starting with Mark, um, what do you wish you would have known beforehand and what advice would you give to future fellows? I wish I would have known beforehand that the most important thing I'd pulled from the program wasn't the entrepreneurship and business training. Um, it's only been in retrospect. Like I said, I, I have since pivoted. Uh, I might be able to get to it in the Q&A, but I've since pivoted away from entrepreneurship. Um, but that doesn't mean dog tech still hasn't been incredibly useful for me. I actually had fellow cohort members that had no interest in entrepreneurship and they still love the program. Um, but I wish I would have I wish I would have been a little more open-minded at the time. And I was, and kind of speaking to what Ann said, I had the mindset of goal-oriented. So I was there to learn business stuff. I was there to do things. And the even at the time, the social aspect was still the most impactful, but I wish I'd been fully immersed in the other pieces as opposed to, there were parts of me that at times was like, well, I, I don't need this or this contact, this speaker that came in, it's not, they're not in the coaching space. So I don't need to keep their contact info. Um, and so I talked to them, I was friendly with them, obviously, but it wasn't something that I wrote down. And so I wish I had gone into it knowing, like, keep contact with everyone, or even if you don't like write down their contact info, add them on LinkedIn, do that whole because you never know where you're going to end up in six months, a year or more, and who is still going to be there to help you because everyone that they do bring in for dog tag, i unless I'm mistaken, is all on their own time. They're not getting paid to be there. Uh, so like they're, they are really there to help the veteran spouse caretaker community. They are there to see you succeed. So regardless if you think you're going to need that resource at the time, just write it down. Keep that, keep that info because it, it can be very useful for you in the future. So that's the one thing I wish I had known. That's great advice. Thank you, Mark. And. We, it's so interesting. We, we identified someone, um, or maybe she self-identified herself um, to take notes. She was a scribe. And so we had a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. I want to say 200 lines long, at least, of all the people that came through, like their name, their organization, their contact, what they talked about. And, um, and people still reference that now, like years and years later. It's just such a good resource. Um, Gosh, you know, this is such an interesting question and uh, hindsight is so unfair sometimes, you know, like, I guess, I don't know that there's anything I, I would want to tell myself or that I would want to know because it, the, the value of the lesson that I learned, which was how limiting my expectations are um, even well-intentioned expectations, just, just how much they limited me is really what I learned. And, and I think dog tags approach of really having no expectations. I mean, they expect you to do the work. It's not like that. I mean, it's, you know, there's definitely, it's a heavy lift and you, you learn a lot, but in terms of, I mean, I always grew up with, it wasn't in my, and my parents were very crafty about it. It wasn't, do you want to go to college? The question was, which college are you going to go to? That kind of thing. You know, it was never, you know, do you want to do this? But dog tag is very much about what is it that you want to do? And we don't have any expectations. You want to go back to school. You want to start your business. You want to um, you know, do personal enrichment, you want to go out and get a job, whatever it is that you want to do, you're going to be fully supported in dog tag. Um, and that is, it can be a very overwhelming and intimidating arena to, to be in, to really kind of be met with just at, there's very few places. And I think times in, in life that you get paid a stipend to sit down and learn quality information from people who very much care about you. And you get to investigate yourself and do some serious life reflection and inquiry. I, I mean, it's just, it's a rare opportunity. And with that opportunity, as they say, comes great responsibility. And 
I went in with the intention and the expectation, I'm going to make the best of this. I'm going to give it my all. I want to, you know, make sure I don't miss this opportunity. And with that approach, I think I somewhat limited myself, like, because I came around to it in the end. I mean, I, you know, Megan and Kyle, they walked me through it and I landed exactly where I believe I'm supposed to be, but it's, it's not at all what I expected. <laughs> I guess I should say this, the program was better than what I expected for none of the reasons I expected. That's, that's the most accurate way of saying it. <laughs> Great advice. Thank you, Anne. Willie, go ahead. That is the, the perfect segue. Um, as I've stated in the other previous questions, my purpose to come into dog tech was to increase my business knowledge, to get more knowledgeable in business strategy and plans. And I will say the wellness pillar, the wellness pillar was something that I did not know I would get that much fulfillment from. And I didn't realize how much fulfillment I had gotten from it until the program had ended. And I say that to say this, through these weeks and months of programming, you have this, you have wellness built into the program. I come from an environment that wellness was not necessarily a forefront. And in business, I was never thinking, hey, what's a good life uh, work balance? What's a good way to have a daily practice? What's a good way to be an effective listener and communicate more effectively and listen to other people's opinions and give other people space to the wellness piece was one of those pieces that I can say I extracted the most value. And like Ann said, I had no idea that that was going to be a part of the program. I knew wellness was, I didn't know that that was be uh, one of those things that I still practice. Some of the practices, some of the, the, uh, the programs that we did, I think from that wellness piece, we put together a, uh, a playlist. My cohort, we put together a playlist of music and to be able to learn, it, and I'm, I'm gonna say this and I'm, I'll ramble and get super emotional, to really get to understand what motivates other people. When you have a desire and a goal that is mutual, that you don't have to go alone at it. That's what I extracted. I never thought that I would do, to extract that piece from this program, but it really gave me an opportunity to see people that were like me and different than I was, all working towards this common goal and to go through the highs and lows and to feel supported and to know that this program was not just built on knowledge and information and business entrepreneurship that this was a, a full holistic type of program to really grow you in life as a person it is you can't put a price on that so I, I will say that wellness piece is one of those things that I, I won't say I took it for granted but it, it it was a very surprise to me at the end that I'm like I'm gonna miss these people I'm gonna miss this program and I'm gonna miss this process because it was put together in a way that they they thought about those components for a community of people who know what trauma and tragedy are we know where we come from different backgrounds and so to get to a place where we are operating our full purpose so yes that piece and and, and that, that was beneficial and that's something that i take forward in 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 one of those elements that in my own execution of business i i, I put that wellness piece into that because it's in value. Great feedback. Thank you so much, Willie. Um, so now I would love to open it up to audience. So if you have a question, you can feel free to shout it out. You can feel free to raise your hand like Aaron did. So I'll let Aaron go ahead, but also um, feel free to put it in the chat if you don't feel comfortable speaking up. Thank you, Sarah. Um, first of all, I want to say, Anne, you were a guest speaker at my ASAP class, my storytelling class. So good to see you again. <laughs> my question is this. I get from all three of you um, that it's going to be a really busy four months. Um, what, if anything, were you able to do during that four-month program in terms of your follow-on 
career goal, you know, I'll, I'll, if I were lucky enough to get selected, I would be quitting my current job and with nothing to follow on to that. So how much time, if any, what kind of resources do you have in order to do that sort of planning during this time? Alumni, feel free to just hop in. I, I, I hop in there. So uh, myself, I pitched a coaching practice and, and, and you say, okay, well, what, what part of the program helped me on, to follow on? I didn't quit. Unlike yourself, Eric, I didn't quit a, 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 a job to a career rather to, to join dog tag. I will say this in the coaching space, what, what the program allowed me to do with the community partners and the referral network that dog tag has, it allowed me to have the options and opportunities. And I will say similar to yourself, I was at a crossroads, maybe not switching. I had retired from a career. I really didn't know what that would look like uh, going through the dog tag program. Not only did it prepare me to coach, it put me in a position to work with score and be on the leadership team in my local community, coaching and mentoring. It allowed me to, to, to network with other uh, veteran service organizations and, and, and really advocate. They advocate for what I do and, and going through the program, you get that network, you get that referral of people that, a closed door after dog tag. I don't think it, it, I don't see that happening because there's just so many community partners and so many programs like the ASAP program. They came in, we talked about that. And, you know, just I, any organization that supports the veteran community space, I almost feel like they're a part of this dog tag space as well. So uh, I don't think that you will leave feeling unfulfilled or not having what you what you desire to have after the program. It's just so many options and opportunities that that presents them, themselves to you that I don't foresee that to be a problem because everything that I've done and to include you know what I'm currently doing it was because of the, some of the networks and people that I met through the program. Thank you, Willie. And and just to add on to Willie, uh, I actually left a full time job to pursue dog tag, and I I don't regret it at all. Um, what I will say, a word of caution. Uh, so you do have time. So this the schedule, unless it's changed, it's like nine to five or eight to four, depending on your time zone, Monday through Thursday, with Friday being an off day for homework or doing whatever else you have to get done. Uh, I found myself doing a lot of like business as, as we got deeper into the program and I had more knowledge, like business prep stuff uh, outside working hours, um, like uh, at night. So this, this is before I had a child. So that doesn't exist <laughs> anymore. Um, but uh, what I would say, word of caution is when you're in programming, focus on programming because there are, you'll get what you put into it. And it is obvious for people that are there that are doing other things that they're doing other things. Uh, and so each person's their own personal choice. That's fine. But you can tell the people that aren't fully vested in the exact thing we're in. And I think that not only does it kind of throw the mesh of the cohort off a little bit, but it also they don't get the full benefit of the program. So if you're there, like I said, I, I was trying to start a business while I was doing this, but I would recommend trying to keep that to your Friday, your weekend when you have free times or after hours, if you have something going on, because you will get a lot of the program if you're if you're present cameras on and you're interacting. Thank you. But yeah. Great, thank you so much, Erin. Uh, Monica, did you have a question? I did have a question. However, you answered it. Me, uh, me and Gina had the same question. So thank you for, oh, okay. for that question about mm -hmm. finding your voice. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, um, uh, alumni, I don't know if any of you wanna touch on your experience with finding your voice a little bit more, but that could be helpful for some additional context. I think it kind of goes nicely with Aaron's question, the um, finding your voice. So Father Curry, um, which is, is, a, is, if you're not familiar with his story, I, it's well worth your time. If you Google Father Curry and um, you know, you'll find YouTube videos about him, but he, he actually started, um, he was born without his right arm, so he was disabled, and 
he started a theater group in New York for disabled people. And his, his whole motto was that, you know, if, if regularly abled people can go up and make a fool of themselves on stage, then disabled people ought to be able to do that also. And we shouldn't deny them opportunities to do that. And so he did that. And then he came to Walter Reed at the time he was only a brother and I don't want to say only to minimize it, but he was, he was a Jesuit brother because the church said that he couldn't become a priest because he couldn't hold the Eucharist up with both, both of his hands. And um, so he was fine with that. And he started a writing group at Walter Reed and got to know service members there and pretty intimately and uh, got familiar with their stories of trauma and such. And one day somebody who confided in Father Curry or Brother Curry at the time and said, you know, I really want to do a confession. I, I feel like I'm ready. And um, Father Curry said, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm a brother. I can't take, I can't, can't, can't do confessions. And the service member really had a full blown temper tantrum. I mean, and said, I, there's not another person I can trust with this information. You must become a priest. And Father Curry kind of took that as his marching orders and said, all right, I'm going to set out and see if I can become a priest. And so he, if you, I never was fortunate enough to meet Father Curry in person, but the legends that I've heard of him is that he, you know, ran it all the way up, you know, maybe to the Vatican or whatever the highest echelons are, and was able to become a priest. And he saw a, a gap in service member transition, where there's all these great plans that the Department of Defense comes up with, but in, in you know, actual operations, it's not really it's not really done well. And so he had this idea of wanting to start a bakery as a model for an entrepreneurial incubator. And just as a general plan to kind of see how does a, an establishment run and, and learn all those kinds of things. Connie Milstein, the co-founder had a similar organization for disadvantaged women going through abuse and trauma in New York. City. So they paired up and created this dog tag bakery model. And when they were building the bakery in Georgetown, Connie went and bought the building and they refurbished it. I think it was a Chinese restaurant or something. They redesigned the, the bakery. And one thing that Father Curry said is there must be a stage in the dining room. And it was very controversial because you're talking when you come into models and, you know, profit stuff and tabletops are our value and he said absolutely there's got to be it's the stage is as important as the oven and so um despite the resistance and the criticism he said there's got to be a stage and the the purpose of it being that he really wanted the program to be a place where people could feel safe and supported enough to figure out them, figure themselves out. And he said, you know, service members of all the people based on, and those who love us and our family members and caregivers have been through such in, intense life experiences that, that, and exposed to the, the most um, controversial contrast of the human experience that we have incredible gifts that if we're willing to look into them, discover them and be honest about them is different and it's hard work. It's not, it's not easy work to do, but he said for those that are willing to do it, he, you know, and then create something from it, whatever that might be, you know, create whatever, um, you know, whether it's businesses or find a life path that's more aligned with whatever is discovered in that within those five months and so finding your voice there's um is a dedicated you know part of the curriculum where you spend time going through exercises and journaling and writing and writing prompts and by the end of it you have a monologue that can be um you know i did a poem that kind of um showcased everybody in my cohort. People tell very personal stories uh, that they've discovered as life-changing or, or highly inspirational. People write songs and share them. And now that it's been virtual, I've loved it. I, I, the minute the, I anticipate when the invitation's going to come out 
and I block it off on my calendar because I truly, it's to me, it's like, if you, if it could be said that an establishment has a pulse, like that it, that it has lifeblood itself, that is what it is for dog tag. I, I think, I think finding your voice is where life experience meets personal inquiry and self-reflection and that alchemy that takes place in that, that fusion, you know, say like nuclear reactor type stuff where that fusion takes place. The results are, I mean, unimaginable. It's just, I, I, I really, it's one of my most favorite. It's also, it can be very terrifying for, you know, it's, it, you know, they say public speaking is like what the, the biggest fear of most people, but it's really a wonderful thing. And, um, a lot of alumni come out for it. The whole board is usually there and it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience usually the day before the evening before graduation. Perfectly summed up, Anne, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I definitely wanna hold space if there's um, a couple more questions. Um, we have a couple minutes left. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, um, or if you think of one later, you can absolutely email us um, at fellowship at dogtaginc.org. Um, also, I am putting in the chat the um, events link um, on our website, and also um, you can subscribe to our newsletter here. Um, but I also just want to share a friendly reminder that if you are applying for a program, um, you can fill out the eligibility form and then you'll be invited to complete the application. Um, make sure that you have the application and all of the supporting materials in by September 22nd. Um, but if you have any issues with filling out your application or anything like that, you can definitely email us. Um, again, that's fellowship at dogtagging.org. I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, awesome. It looks like all of uh, the participants' questions were answered. Um, so I guess with that, we are perfectly on time. Um, <laughs> thank you so much to Mark, Ann, and Willie for being here. I could not do my job without awesome alumni like you guys. Um, so thank you again. Um, yeah. Is there anything else, Mark, Ann, or Willie, that you guys need or would like to share? Nope, we're all set. Okay. Awesome. Well, with that, we are all finished. So I will go ahead and end the recording.